Hello, I thought I'd put together a snapshot of some of our family history. We'll start with my grandmother, Amy Jones, who is in the front, and her two sisters behind. A larger family group shows Amy in the white dress in the back row, with her mother with the black dress in front of her. A big family group which we don't know all the names to. Amy's mother was known as Grandma Jones, so this is my great-grandparents and I think they lived at Framelode. Here is Amy growing up as a young lady. And her sister Elsie. This is just before they met my grandfather, Arthur Rose who lived and grew up in Easington. This is him as a young man. My other grandfather, Fred Collins, came from Chichester and married May Woodward, who came from Churl in Wiltshire, and they moved to my steg in South Wales. And here is Granny Collins, with my dad on her right, with Alec as a baby, and their older brother, Ted. This is Amy with my mother as a baby. My mum was born in Ewley and here she is with her mum and dad, Amy and Arthur. My mum's full name was Audrey Irene Rose and here's another photo of her as a baby. This one of her grandmother, Grandma Jones. They moved to Lower Camp and opened a paper and sweet shop as mother was growing up. My grandfather also had a job in Listers and here he is with uh, his wife Amy and my mum Audrey. Here is Amy, Arthur, Audrey, Rose, Edie, Fred, Doris, Harry, Jean, Mr. Green and Morris. And the four sisters, Rose, Edie, Amy and Doris. Amy developed osteoarthritis towards the end of her life and spent the last few years in a wheelchair with my mother looking after her. Here we have Arthur, Amy, Audrey, Grandma Jones and Auntie Grace. Here's Auntie Edie and Uncle Fred and their cat when they lived at Calm. And here's Jean Nichols and Mum, her dad and Jean. And then we have Auntie Grace Uncle Fred, Doris, Jean and Morris. You can see Cam Clock Tower in the background there which was at Cam Mills but is now knocked down. Mother had a job at uh, Cam Mills during her teens as well as working in their own shop. Here she is with Jean again in their back garden and you can see all the vegetables that they're growing. There's my mum on a bit of an outing, perhaps a Sunday school outing and she's in the back row. They went on holiday to several places. I think this was in Blackpool with Barbara and here having a swim with Auntie Elsie, having some fun before she got married to my father. They also went uh, and had some relations at Framelode and uh, down on the Severn and that's Mum uh, having some fun down on the sand when the tide was out. 
Uh, she's really enjoying herself here, rowing the boat on holiday and here with her dad Arthur on holiday. She had some aunties, this is Auntie Holly with her sisters, may have been the Kilminsters sisters. And this is Auntie Elsie and Uncle John. Uncle John with Barbara. And here Grandma Jones, Auntie Grace, Auntie Elsie and Barbara and the dog Bob with Uncle John. Here's Barbara in her back garden. And then we have Auntie Edie and Uncle Fred he used to live in Cowley in Oxford. Here's my dad with his uh, dog Jip down in the garden of uh, their bungalow down the end of Green Street and he met my mum before the war. He was working in uh, fibre arts uh, on Hopton Road making fibre tubs before the war and they decided to get married they uh, had some photos taken of their wedding just outside Carfax uh, where mum lived with her parents on Hopton Road and there they are with the bridesmaids and dad looking smart again in his suit uh, and have some nice lilies as a bouquet so then the war was really upon them by then and Dad had to go off for a few years to uh, fight for his country. The Second World War and my father joined the 8th Army and went out to Egypt. It was the only time he went abroad in his lifetime and it must have been quite a culture shock going out to Egypt and get to know uh, all his unit. He was always dressed very smart at uh, whenever I remember him and uh, took pride in how he looked and there he is in Cairo getting used to the sunshine uh, they had a, some time to look round what with the pyramids and the sphinx and when they went to Cairo they always went in threes because they found it was unsafe they could get robbed or even knifed uh, so they used to go and protect each other very cold in some of the mornings in the desert and they used to have their overcoats on and give them their cigarette rations etc. In the mornings they used to collect the dew off the tarpaulins over the top of the lorries uh, and put into their drinking canister because water at sometimes was in short supply and they used to make tea, use the tea leaves several times and then sell it on to the locals and uh, beat a hasty retreat. There he is with some of his uh, friends in the desert. He did meet his brother Fred once in the desert as they were going by some mine sweeping which Fred used to do. Sandstorms were quite regular and they used to sort of hide in their tents and dig holes down under the tents to get away from the sandstorms. A lot of work used to go on, loading the guns etc and the tanks ready for battle. My father was in the anti-aircraft unit of the 8th Army and used to load the guns as well as work out the telemetry of the fire. He was in several battles in Egypt, the Battle of Tobruk and the Battle of Alamein. There was very stressful times out there when he also heard that his brother had been shot down as pilot in a Wellington bomber over Cologne and was killed and thought perhaps he would be joining him shortly. They used their anti-aircraft guns at times to knock out tanks and that meant that a lot of the shrapnel from the tanks would land back around the, the gun in position. This is his unit out in the desert and just before the Battle of Alamein where they were surrounded by Germans and could see the Germans on the horizon and they were short of fuel, and water and food. But eventually the battle turned around and they started to capture German soldiers. Here's one. 
and that turned into many more as time went by and my father's final job in Egypt was as warden in one of the prison camps uh, before he returned to England because he'd put his shoulder out playing rugby uh, he's a great sportsman in the desert and went on to research and was at watch it uh, till the end of the war here is Auntie Molly with her baby son David who was born just after the war after losing her husband Ted in the war she brought up David with her mother and lived at Highfields David grew up to be in the choir and eventually choir master. By then my grandfather Arthur Rose had lost his wife Amy but he met uh, his second wife Beatrice Rose here first row far right and they got married and lived at 19 Hopton Road. Uh, this is Beatrice Martin who I used to call Nan and I used to call my grandfather Pomper. This wooden bungalow at the end of Green Street was my grandparents home Fred and May Collins and was where I was born. We then moved to live with my mum's parents at 19 Hopton Road. My father and his brothers Alec and Fred had a business at Green Street named the Pyramid Fibercraft Company and made all sorts of products out of vulcanized fiber from in trays to suitcases and all sorts of boxes. But we lived at Hopton Road with my grandparents and here I am just a few months old on the lawn. Here is Bumper. He had a job at Lister's and he was in the tool room and worked there throughout the war and on until he was 65 and beyond. I spent a lot of time on the front lawn at Hopton Road enjoying the sunshine and the flowers and the my parents had an idea they'd like to build a new bungalow at Cam Green, uh, number one Green Street, and they made plans and started to arrange all the building process when we were living here at uh, my grandparents. Here's a box that probably my father made out of the fibre he was working with, and also I had a tin horse that I used to push around as I was uh, learning to walk. I can actually remember that horse as one of my first toys there in the garden at Carfax. You can see the gas lamp that was lighting the streets just over the hedge there uh, and it was a different time uh, not any technology or computers around at all but very simple toys to play with. One day my grandfather came home with some rope from work and actually made a swing in one of the trees on this lawn and just cut a bit of wood up as a seat. Here I am with Mam and her cousin Barbara at the bottom of the drive at Hopton Road. I think my dad's holding me here. About once a year we went to Oxford to visit Uncle Fred and Auntie Grace and this is in their back garden. Uh, they lived in Cowley in Oxford and he was Uncle Fred was a great photographer and worked in the bookshop in Oxford. This is my first car. Again most things were made of tin or wood and they'd found out by then I'd had a slight problem with my eyes. I had a lazy eye and had to have glasses and eventually had to go to uh, Gloucester Hospital to have an operation. Here's some professional photographs we had taken of me and my mum. It was uh, just before I had uh, the operation. I can just remember these photos being taken. I think I was around three 
to 4 at the time. Colour pictures were very unusual at the time and a special process. Bruce, my first pet dog, and that's in McGreen Street. So then it was time to move into our new bungalow, Cherwell at number one Green Street. Cherwell was uh, an, after the name of the river in Oxford and like my grandparents house Carfax was uh, related back to the connections in Oxford. My father did a lot of landscaping and made these planters in the front two lawns and the driveway down the middle, it all looked very smart. Nan and Bumper come to visit quite often. In 1952 we had a very cold winter, this was just before Christmas. Lots of snow, uh, it seemed cold quite a lot of the time because there was no central heating or double glazing and we just had coal fires and the clothes weren't very warm as they are these days. When I was five I started school at Woodfield Primary School. To get there in the mornings I used to climb in the back of a milk van which was delivering crates of milk and sit on a box with a few friends to get there and used to often walk home on my own at the end of the school day a couple of miles. Happy memories of Christmas time, the Bon Marsh at Gloucester used to have a grotto with all pretty lights and Disney characters and we used to go round and at the end Father Christmas would give you a present and uh, it was a very special time. Here's Nan and Bumper on holiday all dressed up in their finery. They used to enjoy uh, driving around and that's one of my father's cars. I think it's a Morris 10 and at that time he'd even drive in all the way to Chepstow and back each day to work. That our next door neighbour's uh, boy, uh, Neil Pickford. Uh, Josie and Eric Pickford used to live next door to us at Green Street used to have my cousins come up to play quite often. There's uh, myself and Rosie and Nikki, that's Alex's children. They used to come up and uh, we used to have a good time together. That piece of ground at the rear of the house used to be vegetables. I uh, used to grow potatoes in it but then we made a tennis court of it eventually used to play a lot of tennis in the back garden. Here we have my first pet cat trousers, a lovely black and white cat in the front garden. And also one of my favourite toys was this pedal car in Austin A40 with the lights and horn worked and there's Granny Collins on the right in the background. We often used to go up onto Selsley Common in the Morris Thousand, which is my grandparents' car. And there we are with my mum and Nikki. We often used to go out for a ride in the car on a Sunday afternoon and we used to stop and there's my mum with a horse and have a game of cricket in Wickfield in 1957. We used to take a picnic with us and have tea. And there we are again on Selsley Common having another game of cricket. We went on holiday to Seton and this is uh, Auntie Rose, my mum's auntie, and she came to live with us for a few years at the end of her life. It was a great treat to go on holiday back in the 50s because there was no motorways and travel wasn't so easy as it is these days. Did you have great fun when you went to the coast. In the summer for one week's holiday we went to places like Dawlish and Eastbourne, the Isle of Wight and Seaton 
and it was a good time to build relationships with mum and dad and have some fun on the beach. Uh, certainly remember building lots of sand castles with my father and we used to have a great time. On a Sunday afternoon we'd even go just down to Severn Beach and have a go on the boating lake or something and it was just times like this which uh, are really good memories of a childhood well spent with uh, one's family. Uh, we visited Corsham Court and also Blenheim Palace in 1957. Also we had outings to Western Supermare and used to go to Coley Junction and catch the train. We used to go on the pier and have a go on the dodgems or on the slot machines and get some candy floss, have a game of cricket or ball on the beach. Um, it seemed to be always quite good weather when we went down there and had a good time. Uh, it's a good time to just sit and watch the sea and have an ice cream but after that you had to get back to school and by then I'd moved to Camp Hopton School and there we are in a school presentation. I was one of the Sheriff of Nottingham's bodyguards in the front there with the blue and gold shield and sword that my father had made for me for the occasion. Also had a great deal of fun playing tennis on the back lawn at Green Street. Nan used to in her younger day be a good tennis player and she used to teach me all the different backhands and how to spin the ball etc. I was outgrowing my pedal car by then but it used to knock around the garden for a few more years. Another holiday we spent was down at Porth Call and that's me and my dad with mum all coming up behind uh, walking on the prom there at Porth Call. Usually when we went on holiday we'd stay in a guest house and uh, have bed and breakfast and evening meal. Uh, a couple of times we also stayed in static caravans. We used to go to different resorts uh, each year and discover something different. There usually be something of interest, a different uh, pier or at one stage my father decided to take up golf so we used to take the golf clubs with us and in the back of the car uh, he had uh, two different models of a Morris Oxford. Uh, one year we went to Eastbourne and uh, that seemed to be quite an upmarket place in those days and there was lots to do and uh, we bought uh, a football to have a game of ball together and uh, the sun always seemed to be out in those days in the summer holidays uh, from those six or eight weeks we seemed to have off uh, from school and it was a really good break to get away from things and uh, experience uh, some good quality time with my mum and dad. The time was approaching when I'd have to change schools again and go to the Dursley Secondary Modern School. Uh, didn't know really if I looked forward going up to a big school but uh, the challenge had to be faced. But we still went out on our Sunday afternoon trips and this is one when the grandparents took us up round Robra Common and we walked round Robra Fort. But then was the time to go off to the secondary modern school and this was my football kit that we were issued with and of course my father taught me some tackling moves on the back lawn. This is uh, in the gym, there's me in the back row, fourth from the right and then again another year back row second from the left didn't really used to enjoy the gym and jumping over those boxes and vaults and climbing ropes I remember I had some friends down the road in Cam Green that was Mrs White and Mr and Mrs White had bought this Lambretta scooter to enjoy their retirement in and they used to go around different places 
in Gloucestershire and then we got a dog, uh, Buster, and he was a great deal of fun. I was an only child so it was great to have some companionship and we had great fun in the garden. There's some fibreglass planters in the border there that my father had made because he'd just started to produce lots of things in fibreglass and there's me uh, in the back garden at Green Street with Buster on what we called Auntie Rose's seat and we've still got that seat now. There's one of my father's early Morris Oxfords in the background there. A drive that we just had tarmacked and mum with Trousers the cat who is uh, by now getting a little bit old. At this time I got my first camera, an Ilford Sportsman which took a 35mm film and uh, started off with black and white. That's my mum and Buster and trousers in the front garden. But then found there was colour photography to try and uh, started my hand at that and probably it was the start of a lifelong hobby. In the background there you can see the garage that my dad and his brothers built. Well it served the purpose. By this time I was getting into gardening quite a bit myself and used to uh, mow the lawns with our ATCO lawn mower and help my mum and dad cut all the hedges and grass around uh, our bungalow at Green Street. This is my dad, it was again, he's got his Morris Oxford and got his collar and tie on, looking smart. He and his brother Alec had a business at Stonehouse called J&A Collins Limited and they used to make fuel effects for electric fires out of fiberglass. And that's my grandfather. Probably I think it was his, one of his last days at Lister's. He retired at 65 from being in the tool room and then enjoyed his retirement and bought uh, a couple of cars. He started off with a Vauxhall Viva and then a Morris 1100 which is there. We'd gone to meet Auntie Grace who you see there and her husband Uncle Fred at Fairford and there's some friends of my grandparents, the next door neighbours and some friends from Norway at their home in Hopton Road. Unfortunately by then my parents had got divorced and my father met uh, Olive and she was his secretary at his business in Stonehouse and eventually uh, they got married and spent a few years together. Unfortunately my father died when I was 21 but before then I had learnt to drive and had a few girlfriends. I got myself a Triumph Herald 948cc 1959 model and put spotlights on the front and met Helen Minchin from just down the road and she was at college and we got out one day here to Castlecombe motor racing and uh, had some fun. Once she'd uh, passed her exam she got a teacher's job down in Newbury and really I think that put the end to our relationship being such a great distance. Well, I met Marion Wallace from Cheltenham shortly afterwards. She lived down at Bybury Road at Ben Hall Estate in Cheltenham and we used to go out dancing and go out for meals and go down the cellar bar at uh, Cheltenham. Uh, we'd actually gone on holiday as well down to uh, Torquay and Dartmouth but uh, that come to an end after a, a few years and a friend and myself went down to a dance in Cheltenham one evening and I met Caroletti from Three Jubilee Road and we started going out and we felt that we were meant for each other and this is in the garden of my father's place in Sudgrove and then started a beautiful relationship and the best was yet to come. <laughs>